Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a fun and kind of different project to share with you. We're gonna do some jewelry with some UV resin. Now I've used resin in the past. I've used um, epoxy resin quite a few times. I've used polyester resin. I've used it for different craft projects and to make jewelry and different things like that. Um, but I never tried UV resin. Now resin has always had a lot of kind of downsides for me. It's stinky. Um, I work in a basement, which is kind of cool. So I'm very limited to the amount of time during the year I can do it and I've got to use it up within six months because it has a short shelf life. I've ruined resin and that's really a bummer so that's kept me from really branching out much in resin. So um, I was sent this kit from the Let's Resin Company. I was curious about it because it's a UV resin and um, as soon as you're done working with it and you want to cure it you put it under a UV light. So I thought that would be kind of perfect for the way I like to work. And um, we're gonna go through the process today and I'll show you what came in this kit. Now, if you're watching this video during Prime Day, um, they actually have a really good deal on this. I think it runs around $40 normally, but they had it um, for like 32 or something crazy like that, which is a great deal because you get all of these non-consumables too that you can keep using over and over again. And I like that it has everything you need to get started so you're not out spending a lot of money on um, molds and flowers and lights and resin and everything else. You have everything you need to do these projects. So uh, let's look at what's in the box. The first thing is the silicone mold and the silicone mold is clear. And the reason for that is because you can actually flip the mold upside down after you've cured it from the top and you can cure it from the bottom. And that's really nice because if uh, if you've got a really thick layer of resin in there and you're worried that maybe, maybe you have some glitter in there or you've got some flowers or something and you're afraid that maybe the light didn't penetrate through all the layers of resin, you can flip it over over and light it from the back and then make sure you're not going to have any sticky bits. You could also set that mold out in the sun with your resin in it and just that you, there wouldn't be any places where the UV resin would not get hit. Um, there's also some necklace cords and some jewelry findings in the kit, which is nice. There's a little measuring cup and uh, silicone sticks. I didn't use a measuring cup because I didn't dye any of the resin, but the silicone sticks were really handy for popping bubbles and spreading it out. Um, you get a bottle of resin. Um, I did a bunch of projects and I still had probably two thirds of the bottle left. And then my daughter made a bunch of the projects. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. And what surprised me was that there was no odor. Now, this comes with a cap on it, um, but it also has another cap that's got a spout. So when you're ready to use it, you'll want to take off the um, the cap, peel off the protective layer, and then put the spout cap on for ease of, ease of use. There's some keychain um, findings in there, which is, it's kind of fun. Um, you know, if you don't have an idea for what you want to use your projects for, you can make earrings, necklaces, and keychains with the stuff that comes in the kit, which is, you know, I think this would be really fun, actually, if you had um, a tween or a teen child and you want to do like a birthday party and have a project that everybody can do or if you're doing a slumber party it'd just be really fun for the kids to do and it's really not that messy um, this is just clear packing tape which um, if you want to make some uh, there's some frames that come in the kit if you want to make some jewelry like we're going to do today with the frames we'll use the packing tape and you'll see how that goes but basically it keeps all the um, the resin inside your uh, your jewelry so if you look at these right here there's frames and trays so you'd use a packing tape with the frames and you'll see that a little bit later and you can also use packing tape and it doesn't have to be this kind it can be any packing tape you have you can do wire like take um Art, artistic wire that you know the thicker stuff and you can make like a loop or a shape or whatever and you can fill that with resin if you stick it down onto the packing tape so it's just kind of a fun technique but um this really takes a lot of the guesswork out of this um so it's a lot of fun there's a lot of shapes there i feel like you've got a lot of chances to try things out and to experiment and to make a lot of jewelry for that you know 40 dollar investment so um so that's kind of fun and this would be so fun for like a like a crafty get together a craft night or or, um, like a party, like I mentioned, I used to do kids birthday parties when I was before I had kids. And this would have been a really fun project to do for a kid's birthday party. This kit also comes with some little mini uh, dried flowers, which is kind of nice because they're sized for the little pendants. Now, if you're experienced at resin, this kit probably isn't for you because you might get kind of bored with, you know, how easy it is. But for someone like me who hasn't used the frames before and who hasn't used UV resin before, this was really I ideal. It was fun. And it was fun for my daughter too, because she could just take the kit and get going with it. Now, this light is a nail light. It's like the kind, if you do gel nails, that you would purchase for your nails. 
It's got LEDs in it and it's perfectly strong enough to do the UV resin curing. I actually have a heavier duty duty UV light that my daughter tries to steal to do her nails, but I'm afraid it will like, you know, give her skin cancer or something because it's so strong. But this is actually a nail light. So um, it's strong enough to cure the resin, but not so like crazy strong that you would worry about your teens using it, I think. Anyway, in my opinion, you use your own judgment. You hook it, it's got a USB plug, so I just powered it up my, with my laptop. I plugged it into my laptop. You could plug it into a charging block uh, or whatever you have. It's just one of those typical um, USB chargers. Now there's some glitter. Now you have to be careful with glitter on UV resin. You don't wanna put so much that the light can't get through. That's why I said with a mold, you can flip it so you can uh, cook it from the backside. Uh, that's what I would recommend if you're gonna use glitter. And it's got, uh, we've got 12 different colors here. They're kind of like the, the ultra fine glitters. So, you know, I, it doesn't seem to be any different than what you would get with regular craft glitter. Although the orange is neon for some reason. I noticed that under the light, it just really glows. So the orange is neon, which is kind of fun. If you made earrings with that and then you had like a black, black light party or something. And the other container is like glitter flakes, kind of like mylar flakes, which are really pretty. If you do them in the clear mold with a resin, you get this really lovely iridescent look. My daughter made a bunch of pairs of earrings with those in the clear molds and they were just lovely. And I wish I got pictures of them before she packaged them up and put them in the booth. It came with these stickers too, which um, you can use in between the layers of resin if you want to. Um, I really didn't use them. I, I tried a little experiment with them, but I wasn't really keen on them. But it's just another thing you can use. And I think, you know, this kit gives you a lot of ideas of different things you might want to try with your own resin experiments. So um, without further ado, we're going to get to the project portion of the video so you can see how it all goes. It's nothing earth shattering. I'm just using this stuff in the kit, but, um, but I had a real fun time with it. And I'll also show you how I make my fun uh, dyed seam binding um, cords for my necklaces. So without further ado, let's get to that. This also does come with some tweezers, but I got to say the tweezers are not that great. If you have a better pair of craft tweezers, I would highly recommend using those. But um, the nice thing about these tweezers is that you can use these and not get your nice craft scissors, uh, tweezers all covered with resin. One other thing you need though is some rubber gloves or latex gloves, whatever, whatever sort of gloves you like to use for crafting because resin, it doesn't matter the kind, is extremely sticky. And even though there's no odor with this particular resin, I still had my doors and windows open so that air could ventilate. Um, even though you can't smell it, I just would feel better if you guys opened your doors and windows if you're going to do this craft. Um, just my advice. And it does come with troubleshooting and um, instructions. So that's really handy if you are unsure, if you've never done it before. I would definitely read it through because it goes over the differences between using epoxy resin and polyester resin. Um, so you kind of know what to look for to make sure you do get those good results that you're after. Make sure you protect your work surface because resin is very sticky. I'm using a silicone mat, the Jane Davenport Paint to Faint Mat. And as a bonus, silicone actually grabs the packing tape. So I have the tape sticky side up on the silicone mat and I'm pressing my frame firmly into the tape to create a seal. Now I'm putting on some rubber gloves so I don't get the sticky resin all over my hands and I am getting the resin ready to use. So basically I just need to peel that foil off of the cover so that's in there to keep it nice and fresh and then I'm going to put on the lid that has a spout on it and this is really nice because it also has its own cap so you don't need to go back and forth and use that first cap again unless you're storing it or you need it to be smaller for storage but plan on using up the resin if you're going to buy it. I really recommend that because, you know, it's easy to forget about our supplies and have them go to waste. So after you have the um, bottle all set, you want to put a thin coating of resin on the bottom of your charm here. Now that seal between the frame and the taper is going to keep that resin from spilling out. You do want to go to edge to edge with this. And there's a couple different ways you can do your charms. You can um, actually put it under the light on this layer, but I actually like to build it while the resin's wet because I find that I don't get as many air bubbles. I'm taking one of the silicone sticks and I'm pressing or kind of pushing the resin out to the edges. You can also pop any air bubbles that you see. And if you see some bubbles that you can't pop with a stick, what you wanna do is um, take a straw or just lean over the resin and breathe out onto it. And that carbon dioxide will pop the bubbles, okay? Now you can do this in layers, like I said, but I find that I get less bubbles if I do 
do all this area kind of, or these, these first steps in one go. So I'm using tweezers to put the little, uh, some little ferns in here, and these are right from the kit. And then I'm using the silicone stick to press it into the resin. The reason I'm doing this is I don't wanna create any little air bubbles that are gonna be trapped in there. So I want all of these little um, flowers and uh, leaves to be coated in the resin. All right, so you wanna press them in there really well. And that's also, go also gonna help any of that resin hit the edges if need be. And for this one, I actually used the fern and two flowers from one of the little compartments. And then I also grabbed a bigger pink flower from another compartment. So you could just use what's in each compartment on each a charm if you wanna keep it easy, but feel free to mix and match if you want to. I think the kit is set up so that you can go as complex or as simple as you want. And I know this probably looks really tedious, but I'm just making sure that I have this situated exactly the way that I want. Now, because this is UV um, activated, you don't wanna be working near an open window or near where the sunlight's coming in. Um, you wanna kind of keep it, uh, keep it out of sunlight until you're ready to basically set everything. And I'm putting in a little bit more resin to make sure everything is encased really well. And I just wanna try to keep uh, um, kind of like an even, even coating in here. And I'm gonna make sure there's no bubbles. I'm breathing on it, as you can see right there. My hair's a mess, I apologize. Um, and I'm just gonna make sure everything is spread around pretty evenly before it goes under the light. So I have the light plugged into my laptop via USB cord that it comes with, and you just hit the button. Now the button is gonna put it on for one minute. And if you're gonna go over with another coating, one minute will do the trick. As you can see, it's set there pretty well. I can touch it and it's not really sticky. But now I want to make sure I have a beautiful uh, glossy domed effect so now I'm going to go over with one more layer of the, um, the UV resin and just try to apply it so I don't get bubbles and then this time when I cook this layer I am going to do uh, three minutes so I will hit that button three times so after it does its one minute cycle I'm going to hit it again it'll do another minute I'm going to hit it again and it'll do another minute and then it will be good this really reminds me of like an easy bake oven. It's so fun. It's like cooking, but fun. Okay, so we've done three go rounds in our little fantastic light machine and I peeled the packing tape off the back of that. And look, can you see how there's like some texture there? That's the back side, but I wanna make that pretty like the front side. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to go over with another coat of resin. Now, if I didn't wanna do another coat of resin on this, I could pop that back in the machine with the back side up if, it's, if it was sticky at all. But I actually wanted it to be really pretty pretty and domed like the front side because you know sometimes you're wearing a necklace and the charm flips around. I just wanted it to, to be pretty from both sides so you have like that option. Now use a silicone stick to pop any bubbles and to pull that resin right out to the edge so you have a really uh, nice professional look. Take your time. Remember you can breathe on it if you need to remove any bubbles that aren't coming out with the stick and then put it under the light for another three minutes. Once you get the hang of this, you can do multiple charms at the same time and save on electricity and the tedium. I want to experiment with some stuff I had around the house. So I'm using some mini and regular size star shaped sequins and also some of the iridescent mylar that came in the kit to make this moon shaped little pendant. I thought it was really cute. Now, when you're using something like a sequin that could block the light, you do wanna make sure that you light it from both sides. So you light it, then you flip it over and light the other side. But I think that came out really, really cute. Another thing I wanted to try were the trays that came, and those are basically um, like the frames, but they have a back. And I had these one inch circle bottle cap topper stickers, and I thought they would work really well. So when you use these though, the thing to remember is that you need to really get them stuck down well to the background so you don't have resin seeping underneath them. So if you have paper and you wanna glue it, make sure you glue it and the glue is completely dried and it's made a really good bond. I'm using this um, little uh, bone folder tool to burnish down the sticker to the tray so that no resin or air can get underneath there and cause air bubbles. Now the trays have a little loop on it that can make the, um, the tray uneven. So you just wanna kind of keep that in mind and you might need to prop up one end as you do it. But basically you just go in and put a layer of resin like we did before, and then you'll use the clear silicone stick to just spread it around and make sure you have a really nice, um, a really nice even coating. And then what I did was I just actually kind of propped up that edge with a little frame underneath and, um, and heated it up. I also, I also breathed on it there. That's why my head was in the way to get any air bubbles out. 
And there I'm doing it again because I saw another bubble. So it's a carbon dioxide in our breath that takes out those bubbles, by the way. And it will work with different types of resin. And you could pop any big ones with the with the stick. So heat it up and then um, you're going to see that you've got a really nice glossy look. Now, if you want a more raised image, you can just go in with another coat and uh, just give it like two minutes under the light and you should be good. And there's a couple others I was working on. One has a pretty big bubble in it because I did not burnish that sticker down. Now let's do some work with the silicone molds. This is really fun because um, it's really inexpensive. You buy the mold once, actually this comes with a kit, but you can buy a mold once and use it hundreds of times, probably more, and make tons and tons of earrings without having to buy anything other than the resin, really, and your consumables. Um, and the reason, like I mentioned before, the molds are clear when you're using UV resin. These will work with other resin molds, too. They're more versatile than the colored ones, is because the light needs to get through. So if you have some of the, like, blue or gray molds that are out there, they may give you some problems with UV resin because the resin can't harden. So I'm beginning with these big teardrop earrings. I put resin in the bottom of each and now I'm going to add some little inclusions and this kit comes with mylar flakes and glitter. I'm going to start off with these pretty pink mylar flakes and just kind of drop a few in there. They're going to be so pretty just suspended there in the um, in the clear. And I liked my se my uh, sequin experiment so much that I got some pink sequins and some more of those clear sequins and I thought they would look really nice in these earrings. So I'm just going to scatter a few of those in there. And I'm also adding some of the clear star sequins that we used in that moon pendant for a little extra um, sparkle and depth. And with this piece, I'm actually going to work in layers. Because this mold is kind of thick, I was concerned that maybe everything wouldn't get hit with the ultraviolet light. So I'm putting the light on it now and getting that first layer cooked or set, whatever you want to say. And I did it for one minute. And then I'm going in with another thin layer of resin so I can put some other little... Um, embedments in it, I guess. So whenever you're working thick or you're working with opaque things like the sequins where the light's not going to get through them, you want to work in layers. You want to keep your eyes out for for um, little air bubbles, but they're not going to show up as much with something like this with all these little inclusions. I'm using some of those mylar flakes because I think they're just so pretty. And I added another layer of resin, put it under the light, did another layer and put some glitter in there. And now I'm finishing it off with its final coat. I just want to be careful not to overfill it. Now, honestly, I did overfill these a little bit. So I had to go in and sand off a little bit on the corners. So I would try to aim for three quarters full when you're using these molds. Now, while that's under the light, I thought I would experiment with one of these stickers. I don't love this experiment, but I just wanted to show it to you because I think there's ways that this could be kind of cool. I stuck a sticker onto my silicone mat just in a clean area. And now I'm going to go in and just add the resin because you can make your own like, um, uh, you know, like clear dots for craft projects or for jewelry and whatnot. So I thought I would just kind of play with making a little charm or something that could be used as a keychain. I don't know. You could also do like, uh, you could cut words out of a magazine or you could like put the word like peace or hope or faith or whatever and then build like a little page pebble type thing. So basically that's just the idea I want to get across. I'm not thrilled with this project, but you know, it's, it's fine. It is what it is. So I'm going in and I'm popping any bubbles that I see. I can also push that out if I'm not happy with how circular that is. I think it's fine. But um, yeah, you can you can really manipulate it with that silicone stick. And now I'm going to put in some of the yellow mylar flakes. And I find that using the tweezers for these is best because you can really um, you can really kind of specify where you want it to go. And it's not going to get stuck to your gloves. Otherwise, you don't want to be getting like that stuff in other projects where you don't expect it or want it. I think if I had to do this experiment over though, I would have just put the clear the clear resin on top of the sticker. Then I would have cooked it under the light, flipped it over, and then I would have done the glitter and the sequins. I think that would have been a better effect because my sticker's getting covered over. So I cooked the, um, the silicone mold from the back and I popped out the earrings and I'm flipping all three of these things over. So I've got the upside down sun. That's why we're seeing the silver sun instead of the gold side and the upside down earrings because the back side I thought was a little too rough. So I decided to put a coat of resin on the back of the earrings and also on the um, little disc that I made. You just want to make sure you avoid the hole on the earrings. Now, I think what I should have done on the earrings is I should have put just a layer of resin, uh, heated that under the light, then went in with all my glitter and stuff, because then I would have had a smooth backing and I wouldn't have to do this step. Um, I didn't have to do it on the next set of earrings. So, um, 
I just want to let you know. So this is how you fix it. If you have a rough back, just put on some resins and spread it over with the, uh, the tool there. But, uh, in order to avoid that, just put the coating of resin and then heat it with a lamp and then go in, uh, with your glitter and stuff like that. So, um, a word to the wise, if you will. These next earrings are fun and really simple, and I sped it up a bit so it wouldn't be too tedious. So what you wanna do is put a layer of resin in your molds. You don't need too much, you know, maybe fill it a third of the way full, and then you're going to apply your glitter. Now, one of the silicone sticks has a spoon on the end. You wanna use that for scooping out your glitter. It works really good for that. And then once you've got all your colors in, you're just gonna go ahead and put another layer of the resin on top. So you don't need to do this in layers. Um, because the glitter is so fine, you really don't need to put a lot of it there. It's not going to impart a texture on either side. It shouldn't sink too bad. It shouldn't float too much. So it should be just fine the way it is. The key is do not overfill your molds because if you overfill the mold, the, um, the resin is going to catch that glitter on the edges and just give you a really rough area that you'll have to sand off. I used a file or an emery board to do that. So if it happens, you can correct it, but it's just easier if you try to try to keep it like two thirds full to three quarters full so that you just don't have those raggedy edges that you'll have to sand off. Cause sometimes if you have to sand resin, you do get a, like a kind of frosted appearance and, um, this will prevent that. Now you can go in and just kind of clear up the edges with your silicone stick. Uh, apologize, my head's in the way there as I was breathing on it to make sure there's no air bubbles. And then when you do this one under the light, you're just going to have to move the light to each different por uh, portion of the, um, of the, the frame to be able to heat it up because you can't or to light it up because you can't reach it from both portions. Look at the orange glow. That's like a neon, um, a neon earring. And there you can see all done. I'm just going to pull them out. Now I do recommend doing both sides. So flip the mold over and heat it up from the other side. And I would do three minutes on each side just to be on the safe side. Now you'll get better the more you do this and your work will look a little bit more professional, but I'm telling you, when he, if you have these earrings on, they're going to look fantastic. You're not going to notice where the glitter's patchy. It just comes with practice. And with the mold, you have as many times as you want to try um, making more and uh, the resin goes a long way. Your workspace can become a real mess when you're working with resin. So I kept a, just a clear shoe box, plastic shoe box to put my charms in as I was working on them. And then I just set it in the sun for an hour. I figured, you know, while I was cleaning up my studio, they can get a little more extra UV exposure. If anything wasn't fully cured, it would be in the sunlight. And then um, I could get cleaned up and ready to turn these beautiful little charms into some jewelry. So I'm gonna start by dyeing some seam binding. Seam binding is a rayon ribbon that you can dye. It, it will crinkle and make these really beautiful uh, romantic looking ribbons for either bookmarks or necklaces and whatnot. And that's what we're gonna do today. I decided I wanted three colors of my vintage seam binding. So I cut off, oh, I would say probably uh, three yards of, um, of ribbon times three. So each, each crumple of a ribbon is about three yards. And then I sprayed it with water and just scrunched it up with my fingers to get it all, um, all smushed up. This is going to help it wrinkle when it dries. And then I'm going to take one of the ribbons and I'm going to color it with an ink tense block. Ink tense is a, uh, dye product that is permanent on fabric. So even if these necklaces get wet, they will still be fine. So um, what I'm going to do basically is take a few different shades of each color. I'm going to do um, a bunch of yellow, a bunch of pink, and a bunch of green. So I like to use a couple different colors just so I can get a very variegated look. And then just like swirling it around in the ink and scrunching it up is going to give it a little bit of a variation. It's going to look a lot more vari variated, varied while it's wet. And as it dries, it's going to get a little bit more mellow. So you want to account for that and make sure your ribbon's a little darker than you think you're going to want it. Make sure to wipe up the workspace before you start a contrasting color so you don't end up with mud like I did between the green and the pink. I just wiped the table before I went to pink. So after it is dry, you leave it scrunched up overnight. And after it's dry, this is what you see, this beautiful kind of crinkly variegated ribbon. And now we can simply string that through the holes in our charms to create lots of beautiful necklaces. I think these would make beautiful gifts or party favors or even group projects for like a bridal shower or something like that. It's just so fun and beautiful and pretty to make. You just need to prep the ribbon beforehand. To finish the earrings that we made from the molds, I used an emery board to sand away any rough edges and then I put a large jump ring that was included in the kit in through the holes that come from the silicone mold and then I just added an ear wire and that's all there was to that. 
This was so much fun and I hope you enjoyed watching me make these resin projects and I hope it inspires you to give it a try. I like this UV resin because it doesn't have an odor. It sets as soon as I put the light on it and I don't have to worry about temperature or humidity as much as I did working in a cool main basement with other types of resin. So if you would like an easy resin project, I think this kit is just fantastic for that. I was not paid to make this video. These are my own opinions and um, I think it was a lot of fun. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Until next time, happy crafting!